everybody. The time is 3.30 p.m. So I uh, now call this meeting of the School Health Advisory Council to order. This is the third meeting of the school year and the second meeting dedicated to Proclamation 2022, which is the Health and Physical Education Instructional Materials Adoption. So we're gonna get started to our, you'll see there wasn't very many items in the agenda today because we are gonna dedicate our time to the proclamation. So again, thank you guys for being here uh, as a part of this very important work. The first item on the agenda is to consider the approval of the minutes from the January 25th SHAC meeting. Uh, a copy of the minutes was uh, provided to all council members prior to today's meeting, uh, but I would like to take just a few minutes to review some of the key items from that last meeting. So at the meeting on January 25th, I shared information on the health and physical education instructional materials adoption. Information included a review of the adoption timeline, the instructional materials under review as provided by the publisher, Goodhart Wilcox, an overview of the grade level instructional materials, the online textbook information, a reminder of the public comment deadline, an overview of the new high school physical education courses, and the TEA website address for review of the newly adopted health and physical education TEKS. I also informed the committee that Proclamation 2022 updates will be continued at this meeting, including a final review and selection of instructional materials to be presented by members of the Instructional Materials Selection Committee from the district. All right, I now call for a motion to accept the minutes of the January 25th SHAC meeting as distributed in red. Do I have a motion? You can unmute if you need to. Do I have a motion to accept the minutes as distributed in red? So moved. Dr. Horton? Thank you, Dr. Horton. Do I have a second? I second. Ms. Franklin, thank you. Do you have any discussion? Okay, I'll now ask for all voting members of the SHAC to vote. Please use the chat feature at the bottom of your screen. You can type yes. If you are in favor, no, if you are opposed. Please take a minute in the chat again. If you are a voting member, I'm gonna try to monitor. Okay, thank you. It's unanimous. So we have uh, adopted the minutes as distributed in red. Thank you very much. All right, the next item on the agenda is an update on Proclamation 2022 and the District Instructional Materials Selection Committee's final review and recommendation. Uh, we do have members of the District Instructional Materials Selection Committee uh, on the call today. So thank you guys for being here. Uh, but I've been asked to present on their behalf. So I'm gonna share my screen. All right, so again, today we'll, I'll provide you with an update on where we are with the proclamation. And once again, this will serve as the District Instructional Materials Selection Committee final review and recommendation for the SHAC. Uh, we distributed a teacher evaluation to all the health and PE teachers within the district. And you'll see on, on this slide that uh, the categories that we asked teachers to evaluate uh, when they were going through the materials. So these categories include, uh, included accurately aligned to the health and PE TEKS. Uh, the program addresses themes and issues appropriate and relevant to the grade level. Evidence of ELPS strategies and integrations throughout. Uh, now, our ELPS, if you're not familiar with this term, is our English Language Proficiency Standards. It addresses that the specific context language uh, that, it, that acquisition provided in the instructional setting, and that's reading, writing, listening, speaking. Uh, evidence of differentiated instruction and support for struggling learners and tiered assignments. Activities that apply to diversity of student interest and learning styles. Evidence of formative assessment activities to quickly and frequently check progress opportunities for higher order thinking skills, and online tools that are user-friendly and student accessible. 
And so you can see from the chart for our middle school health, uh, we were 84% to 96% approval of the materials. High school health was 100% approval all the way. And our fitness and wellness skills, that again, that's a reminder, it has a reminder, it's our PE course for high school uh, for the lifetime fitness and wellness strategies. And we were 90 to 100% approval on all topics, on all categories. If you're more of a visual learner like myself, I included a little slide here for everybody else that kind of showed you a bar graph to show uh, the approval ratings on all of those divided by middle school, high school, and the fitness and wellness skills. All the categories, same at the bottom. Now, Goodhart Wilcox has provided with us um, a breakdown of the materials and how they would possibly be purchased. And this was presented to our district committee as well. And we had a discussion about what we would like to present, what we'd like to recommend for our district. And so just so you kind of see what was presented. So for the Texas Health Skills for Middle School, they offer a print textbook. They have a digital classroom subscription, eight year subscription. They have a bundle of a print textbook and digital classroom subscription. They have a digital LMS ready common cartridge. And they also have a bundle with this one as well, a print textbook and the digital LMS ready common cartridge. Our district committee has met and they recommend that we purchase or consider purchasing the print textbook classroom sets only for our junior high middle school campuses. Uh, they decided that it's not important. It's not um, it's necessary to purchase one for one copies of the textbook, but we'd like to bundle the print textbooks classroom set with one for one digital classroom subscriptions at the eight year mark. Okay, you can see at the bottom that they also offer four year but the district selection committee would like to recommend print textbook, digital classroom subscription bundle. You'll see it's the same for high school, same breakdown. The selection committee also recommended that we look into purchasing print textbook, classroom sets only, and one for one digital classroom subscriptions for the eight year subscription. For the Texas Fitness and Wellness Skills, this is the high school PE course for lifetime fitness and wellness pursuits. That we would purchase digital curriculum center, eight year subscription, one per campus at least. One per campus, this is for our high schools. The health education opt-in requirements, just to kind of give you a, a, again a review of this information. So House Bill 1525 and Senate Bill 9, uh, these are the topics that will, are included with the opt-in requirements. Now, as a reminder, House Bill 1525, this has to do with the opt-in for human sexuality instruction, uh, but also this is one that has to do with some of the requirements for the shack. And so some of you have been with us for a while, have noticed the shack has changed a little bit, how uh, we run the meetings. Um, but some of the things that the House Bill did recommend, and uh, we've been doing for, for many years within Conroe ISD, but some of the things that are a little bit different is that is the recording and the posting of uh, video videos of the, uh, the meetings. Uh, we've also placed on every campus notices of all the meeting dates for our School Health Advisory Council. Uh, we post the minutes, the agendas, the dates. We've been doing that for many years in Conroe, but they've set a time limit on there. We've always been under the time limit to set those on our website. And also it, it broke down some information about the shack and its role in uh, recommending to school boards uh, sexual health education. Senate Bill 9, this is the one that dealt with the topics of dating violence, family violence, child abuse, and human trafficking. And the purpose of that bill was to empower children to recognize abusive and unhealthy relationships and seek help. So what Goodhart Wilcox has done is they've taken that information released from those, uh, those two bills and they've, had a, they've uh, created a companion text. So there is a, a text, a textbook and an online text that incorporates all of the, uh, all the topics in House Bill 1525 and Senate Bill 9. This allows uh, the, the districts to easily provide access to these opt-in topics. So some people might ask, you know, well, was this a part of the original adoption review? Yes, it was. So if you had a chance to go online and uh, look at that online library, all these topics were included in that the, the link for all the Texas Health Teaks. And so when you clicked on a Teak, it would send it a link to you with all of the, uh, the text information. And when you click that tech, that link, it would show you all the text and what was included with the topics from 1525 and Senate Bill 9. Well, all they've done is taken those topics and placed them in a companion text, a separate text. And I'll break down for you what's in each one so you can see. 
So from middle school, the companion text will include information from chapters 17, 18, 19, and 20. And you take a second look at all these topics. These are the ones that are encompassed in the House bill and the Senate bill. So these were always available for review, except now they just take them and put them in that separate companion text. For high school, it's the Health Fund Credit course offered to eighth graders and our uh, high school students. Chapters 20, 21, 22, and 23, they just pulled those topics from those bills and placed them in a companion text. So part of the bundle, if we agree to this, is um, the publisher would provide hard copies if we choose and digital subscriptions. And so students will have access to this as well as parents. I want to show you a, a copy of our parent consent form. This is our opt-in form. So um, with 15, uh, with 1525, it was immediately mandated that we have an opt-in form. We've always had a form in our district. So as parents, you've probably seen this with your student, um, but now we would use it more of an opt-out, but with opt-in, this is what you would sign at the beginning of the year. The dates of instruction would be on there. Uh, as you can see, we currently have our currently adopted health text, which is the Glencoe Health and Wellness textbook and instruction materials. That's what we currently use. This will change next year. And uh, with the adoption, we will we'll update this with the newly adopted materials. This is not part of the adoption today. This is something that's considered a supplementary, but I just want to uh, remind everyone that uh, as far as fifth and sixth grade human growth and development, we do have a video we show to our fifth and sixth graders. Uh, it's the Procter and Gamble always changing and growing up. Uh, we just want to let you guys know that we this is still in place. This is a shack approved human growth and development video. Uh, this still covers many of those teaks and many of the teaks that are coming in 2022, 2023. Um, we will keep you informed if we decide to go another route or find something else that we'd like to use. Uh, this would go through the shack for your approval first. So we also let you know this is what's still in effect and this has been approved by our School Health Advisory Council. We talked to you earlier in the beginning of the year that we are a catch uh, ISD and the catch is uh, the coordinated approach to child health. All of our elementary campuses and all of our K through six campuses have the coordination toolkits in place. The rest of our campuses, intermediate and middle school will have, we'd like to, we'd like to have the intermediate, these uh, coordination toolkits in place as well. We want to expand on that for them with the health strands and the PE strands. Catch does provide all this information. It's hundred percent coverage of the TEKS. The only thing they don't provide is the reproductive health. But this would cover all the health strands and PE strands, particularly for our elementary campuses because the state did not approve any materials for adoption by school districts. So again, since we already have the CATCH program in place, this is something that we would think about adding to those programs on our campuses. For the health component, it would include grade by grade lessons, PowerPoint slides, teacher scripts, student handouts, you know, all these materials that teachers use that could, that could use that are uh, in line with all of the new TEKS for 2022 and 23. Uh, the environmental supports, intercom announcements, signage, the, those things we already have in place with our coordination kits. You may have heard kids coming home talking about go slow and whoa foods, things like that. That's all part of our catch program. For the PE, uh, you may hear about coaches talking about the boxes. Uh, for years, Catch has had a PE program where they have these boxes full of great activities and lesson plans. Uh, they've condensed that into one box, but we're looking at, they also have an online format now that again, our elementary campuses and our K through six campuses, they all have um, registrations for those in place. Um, so whereas a box may have like 400 different activities and the online will have like 600 and that's updated monthly but it's a great activity, it's a great tool to use, and again, it covers all of our teeth for elementary PE. All right, so what's next? On March 22nd, our Board of Trustees will consider the SHAC's uh, recommendation for the Proclamation 2022 Instructional Materials, and then on March 30th, our IMA committee will meet to discuss the approval of purchases. Okay, come on, stop sharing. All right, do we have any questions at this time from anybody on the council?
No questions? Oh. Dr. Hines, your, your microphone is... I think you're Mickey McNair. Yeah. Is that better? Yes, sir. There you go. Hey, I was just going to say it might be helpful for everybody to clarify that IMA is our instructional materials allotment group. And so for those of you who aren't familiar, that's a group that manages those funds that are used to pay for these adoptions. So that's that's why there's another group that gets involved. They're, they're the ones who manage the, the kind of the resources that make this happen. Thank you, Dr. Hans. Do you have any questions or anybody need any, any other clarifications before we vote? Okay, so with that, question I'll not, quick. sorry. I have a question, I'm sorry. Was there yeah. any um, review of the parents that was put out to any of them that reviewed it or was there no research done on any of the, the uh, response from them? Yes, ma'am, we had one parent review from the community and uh, they, the parent review was uh, did, had no positive comments, but there was no specifics to any of the materials at all. So it was kind of hard to decipher which materials they were discussing. Thank you, Ms. Franklin. Does anybody else have any questions? Okay. So I now call for a motion to recommend to the Conroe ISD Board of Trustees their consideration for the approval of the Goodhart Wilcox instructional materials for middle school health, high school health, and fitness and wellness skills for high school physical education. Do I have a motion to vote? I'll make that motion. Ms. Robertson, do I have a second? Oh, Ms. Barrera, I think you seconded. Your microphone was off, but I think that's it. Okay, any discussion? Okay, so again, if you would please use your chat feature. Type yes if you're in favor and no if you are opposed. I'm having trouble seeing all the chat. Dr. Winkler, you mind? Is it, can you see the chat? We do have a question. Just to, and the question is just to clarify: Is it acceptance of the textbook or what is purchase? Class sets plus the digital. The recommendation is classroom sets plus one for one digital. If that answers that question. Okay, we're ready to move forward. Motion passes. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Winkler. Okay, the next item is to review future meeting topics and meeting dates. I'll notify you if we decide to move to an in-person format for the next SHAC meeting. Uh, topics will include an overview of the work of a subcommittee uh, being led by our parent co-chair, Mrs. Westover, on the establishment of a vision statement for our SHAC, along with an update to our bylaws. 
We also plan to have a presentation provided by our Conroe ISD Police Department, coordinated through Captain Blake Locke, also a member of our shack on opioid abuse and use. And I'll also provide any updates to the Proclamation 2022 adoption process. The meeting is scheduled for April 26th at 3.30 p.m. Okay, with that, we have reached the end of our agenda. Dr. Hines, would you like to address the group uh, before we sign off? I just want to say thank you to everybody for making time. I know this is a, a really important, um, even though there weren't a lot of choices, there was only, what well, I guess, one, one resource to review, but um, but still it's important to go through this process and, and to take time to review the materials and get a recommendation together, which we, as we just shared earlier, we'll go to the board meeting in March um, for their approval, hopefully, and we'll see how it goes. Thanks. Um, Dr. Hines, um, this is Bryce Spear. I just wanted to, um, for, for what it's worth, I just wanted to voice that um, from a parent lens, when we have only one textbook to review, and I know that there was three previous and we sort of narrowed down to the Goodhart Wilcox um, material, um, I did go online and look at it. I didn't provide any comment back, um, honestly, because I didn't really know where to start, but um, it, it doesn't feel like much of a choice. When there's only one to pick from, it seems like it's that or that, because nothing's not a choice. So I just want for what that's worth to be you know, placed on the record that it doesn't feel like parents have a good choice when it comes to this topic. Absolutely. And, it, it, and if I'm not mistaken, I think this was a this is a, a process we've only been reviewing or accepting from those uh, resources that have been approved by the State Board of Education. So as it turns out this year, there was only one textbook that they uh, approved. And so that kind of what limits our options. The district always has an option if we want to go out, outside of the lines and go pick something that's not on the approved list. But we're very, I will just share, I think historically we've always been very conservative and uh, we, we tend to stick with materials that have been approved by the State Board of Education. So, but, but that fair, it's a fair observation about this process. There's only one choice and it is limiting. Thank you. Anybody, do have any, I think I see somebody. Ms. Londi, do you have your hand up? Yes. You can unmute. Okay, I had one question. It, it's not a comment on the textbook itself, but uh, one thing I've heard from other parents is the concern that it's a health is a required class to graduate, but there's no, um, like they can take it any year. And if kids take it second semester of senior year, well, it's pretty clear that it's too late by then. And so is that anything that could ever be adjusted and make it something that is required for eighth grade or for high school freshmen because the horse is out of the barn um, by the end of high school. So are you asking uh, when, I'm not sure I understand the question, are you asking when students are allowed to take the health one course? No, that's, that's a concern that I've heard from several parents is that health education is lacking. And one of the reasons it is lacking is because kids don't have to take it except to graduate from high school. So they could take it at age 18, at which point it's kind of missing the point of of required health education it really should be earlier um, and pretty much every um, for all components you know from relationships and um, physical changes to um, drug use whatever is in the health curriculum i did go through the textbook those are things that kids should really um, be required to learn from other parents, that's one of their comments about the health curriculum in Conroy SD. Well, I will say the, the, the health teaks uh, have been written for K through 12. 
all grade levels. And so they are being, they are addressing their geared towards those grade levels. Uh, the Health One credit is the one that's just for the eighth grade, eighth graders or any time in high school. But all those, all those topics, those are, and that's all very good questions that you have. All those topics are discussed in those TEKS and they are geared towards each grade level from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade. Yeah, I can answer some of it too. Uh, you know, I probably can't answer all of it, but give you a little history anyway of, of, of health. I mean, for a long time, and, and Mr. Colson might want to jump in as well, or Mr. Povich, but at one point it was predominantly a ninth grade course. Um, and then, you know, just with different things, with different schedules, um, we also made it available for eighth graders to earn high school credit. So, you, you know, so it started making its way to eighth grade and that probably started back in early 2000s. I want to say we, we started down that road. Um, and then, you know, why is it not just require like a ninth grade or 10th grade? And I think they're probably, I would guess 90% of our students take it fairly early on. There are some that have figured out from a grade point standpoint that if you put it off to your, it's a four point course, right? So if you put it off to your last semester, it's not gonna end up impacting your grade point. Um, so there are there are some students that have calculated that out. For those of you who aren't aware, that that could be a reason why somebody might delay it. And I don't know that was ever anybody's intent, right? And um, and so it certainly wasn't the intent of that course going away. About ten years ago, the state actually removed health from the graduation requirements. So um, it's not even a requirement to graduate in Texas anymore unless they put it back. Um, but that is something that the SHAC committee at that point, I was very active with the SHAC committee at that point, and we were very vocal about recommending that that stay a part of the district's curriculum. Um, and, and so it did at, that, at the recommendation of the SHAC committee. So a little history there that I remember about health, why it didn't go away. Um, but I know over the time, there's always been, I think, some uh, touch and go. There's also students that might take health through their health career pathway uh, or health occupations. Um, but there has been this kind of this touch and go, but it's a great point about, you know, most of the curriculum is intended for earlier, not necessarily uh, later. And, and it's a great, it's a great question. It's a great point, but I, I don't know that, I don't know what percentage delay. My guess would be probably, we probably have 90% of our students take it by the end of ninth grade, but I don't know. I may be off. So Mr. Povich, you might have a better idea about that. I would say most of our kids take it early, um, eighth and ninth grade, especially if they're trying to make room for their senior courses later. Um, they want to get that out. You'll have, I think, like a handful of kids that'll try to wait till the very last semester. And those are the ones that are at the very top that are playing a GPA game has been my experience. So, but most of ours take it early because they have more room uh, by their freshman year for classes. Later on as upperclassmen, your, your schedule gets very tight with all their different choices. I would venture to say that there's probably as many kids who take it in junior high as there are in high school by the time they get there. Any other questions or comments? Thank you, Ms. Lyon. That led to a great discussion. I appreciate you also. Okay, guys. So uh, with that, the time is 3.59 p.m. And so the meeting of the School Health Advisory Council is now adjourned. Thank you all for your time and your continued commitment uh, to the uh, health and well-being of the students in Conroe ISD. Have a great day. Stay safe. See you again soon. See you in April. Thank you.